My void will consume you, if you ask nicely. Your will is no longer your own. Stay away from them. To us! For the Horde! You have led the Horde to a place without honor. Your petty quarrels only make me stronger. Our world needs us, champion. You got you over your head. <laughs> we cannot let the world fall to darkness. We're already lost. Put your faith in the light, and all is possible. Is it truly righteousness that drives you? No! I wonder. It is seem you have guessed. They are coming for you. This is the whispers of wars. Hello everyone and welcome to Whispers of War, show 114. I'm your host Sil and let's just talk about what I did in World of Warcraft this week. So this week the raid was open, or it has been open, uh, and I decided that um, I'm going to bother my guild <laughs> and sign up and raid with them again. This is of course normal, because um, I'm sure that we'll be doing heroic in a while but you know it's still a challenge to get uh, through normal in the beginning and I have to say I'm very very impressed with my guild because uh, you know we, we do prepare and we we have rules to make sure that you see the videos of the tactics you know a little bit what's going on that you have certain add-ons installed um, I think we're quite casual in that sense but you know there, there has to be a baseline of things that you prepare at least. I have to admit I wasn't fully prepared because I thought I had all my enchants and then <laughs> it seemed that there were actually more enchants which I didn't realize so um, yeah luckily my my guild leader uh, had some enchants on him so he he passed those to me very very nicely thank you Bones and uh, <laughs> now I have to say that I'm fully prepared so I have everything that I should be having. Uh, I got my pots and everything and my enchants and also enchants on the go just say in case I have any new gear or anything that drops for me then I can enchant it immediately that's that's you know as far as prepping goes I guess for us um, yeah but it went really well we got five bosses down um, I, I, I dare say that um, some of it we just YOLO'd and <laughs> just went like you know what let's just let's just go and just see what happens and we actually did really well on some of those uh, pulls that weren't serious, uh, just to see the encounter a little bit and get to grips with what was meant with certain tactics. Yeah, I, I'm really impressed with with how we did. So it was a lot of fun. I really loved the vibe of Castle, uh, Castle Nafria. Um, the music, just the atmosphere. I really, really have to say that the dungeons and the raids are phenomenal in this expansion. I really am enjoying it. So tonight we're raiding again. Uh, again, I am. I, I promise to my guild that I am fully prepared now. Uh, as far as I know, as far as I know, this is all that I needed. I know a little bit more now, and yeah, hopefully we'll we'll get everything down. I mean, it would be great if we could clear it in the first week on normal, uh, and then we can start again next week, and hopefully pe more people will get gear and we'll start getting ready for heroics after a few weeks. Um, yeah really really fun it's lovely raiding with my guild again because you know people are so friendly and it's just a, a lot of fun and we have really good raid leaders so it, it really really helps um, yeah just a lot of fun <laughs> I can't I can't other, uh, say it in any other way um, other than that uh, I, I tried Thorgast a little bit uh, on the third level uh, for the legendary for mages, but fuck me the boss that I had I don't know if it rotates I fucking hope it rotates because that boss Fuck me. That was not fun. I tried it several times until you know it really runs out with your um, you don't have any lives to spare anymore and I just I Had somewhat of control and then in the end it was just no um this boss just has too many hit points and I just could not he just did far too much damage so at a certain point I just gave up you know I, you have to sometimes just give up and go like I've done this now too many times I'm not enjoying it and I do this solo 
I know some people do it with groups, but I did it solo, and I'm fine everywhere else, but that boss, not fun. So I'm going to try that again this week, uh, just see what I can do. Maybe, hopefully I'll get a different boss, that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> oh god, I hope it's different. But we'll see. Um, I'm, I'm okay with Thorgast, I think it takes too long solo, but I don't really want to bother my guild with it to, um, to group up and do everything. It would probably go quicker, but... You know, it's it's one of those times that I'm like, okay, instead of anything else, this is just what I'm doing. I'm also still doing Covenant dailies and weeklies, just trying to get that renown up and and other stuff. And, you know, building your your uh, sanctuary a little bit, which is fun. Uh, I do enjoy that. It's still easy to get groups for um, any sort of world quest, really. Uh, I, I'm sort of enjoying the ma. I find it really annoying that you can't mount up. I understand it, but I do find it really annoying. Um, yeah. I I don't know. I, I you know there's so many games I want to play, but my time is completely sucked into World of Warcraft now at this point in time, which is a shame because we will get the Christmas sale soon in Steam, and there are some games I've been eyeing up that I really want to play. <laughs> so. I don't think that will be happening anytime soon. Uh, it doesn't stop me from spending uh, money on games that I really should not be spending any money on because I won't have any time to play them. We'll see. I guess we'll see. Uh, yeah, so spend time well spent, I would say. Really, I'm enjoying World of Warcraft. Still not 100% sure if I'm enjoying the mage. Um, for now, I'll, I'm, I'm going to stick with her. Because from everything that I've played, I, she is the most fun to me. But I just, I don't know, maybe there's a little bit of disconnect still that will come later on. I am going to uh, start leveling my other characters now a little bit because I want to see the other Covenant stories. So, yeah, I'm just leveling them alongside, I think, each other. Uh, I'm not really like, oh, one first to 60 and then another one. I'm just, you know, whatever tickles my fancy, I guess, for that week. And that's really it. <laughs> That's really it. I, I can see that it's, you know, I'm very interested to see how Friends of Fate um, leveling goes, how that works, or if I just want to take it a bit slower now and see more of the story again. I don't know. I mean, I have so many alts anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I can do either or. But now I will leave you with something much more interesting than my week, uh, which is the interview I had with Rick. So. After the interview, I'll come back and we'll talk about the question of the week to see if you are raid ready for um, Castle Nafria. Um, and yeah, we'll discuss that then. <laughs> but I'll see you uh, on the flip side after the interview. And with me today, I'm being joined by a, a familiar voice on a DPS. Welcome, Rig. Hello. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm fantastic. Um... It's Sunday afternoon here in the UK, obviously the same for yourself, and it's I've had a nice chilled week after being off off work playing some some certain game. Um, <laughs> Could it which, be the launch of a certain game? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've I've just had a nice chilled week, no work to worry about, and I've just been kind of playing some playing some computer games and drinking a lot of coffee and. Yeah, just relaxing and back to work tomorrow though, unfortunately, but it is what it is, I suppose, and everyone's got to do it, pay them bills and earn your pennies and all of that. Very true. I think a lot of people are in the same position now. All of a sudden, uh, everyone has to get back to the grind again after mm -hmm. having a week off. Mm -hmm. All right. So why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself and who you are, what you do on the internet? Um, I don't do a lot on the internet, no. Um, I... Uh, I'm Rig, as you said, and I am the host of a podcast called Character Craft, which your listeners will probably be familiar with because I've been on the podcast before and I'm usually floating around different different discords and different people's podcasts and things. So yeah, um, the podcast is called Character Craft and we talk, about, uh, we talk about Warcraft and we talk about the characters that make up that world of Warcraft universe, whether it's NPC, NPCs in game or whether it's um, the actual players like yourself because you've been on our podcast um uh, we talk about because it's not just the npcs that make up make up warcraft and and make the world f 
feel alive and be alive it's it's ourselves as well you know filling that filling that social void and things like that so um yeah we talk about we talk about people that make up kind of our community people that make up our game that we we all love so much um and yeah we 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 record the podcast we we try to get one out every, once every week um and we basically have a bit of a laugh have a couple of a couple of beers myself and my co-host coffee and a lot of the time it's mostly coffee um just being thick <laughs> um he's yeah he's not the sharpest tool in the box is our coffee bless him He's a lovely, lovely guy, but it's a, he's, he's hard work sometimes, and he'll admit that as well. Um, so yeah, a lot of the time it's uh, it's uh, Cuffy being taught things, um, and yeah, being as we as we established on the last time I was on Whispers of War, um, being being consensually bullied because <laughs> he's open to it. He he loves it really. He really does, but yeah. So podcast, um, uh, obviously on Twitter and on the internet. If you just type in character craft, you'll find us there. But apart from that, I don't do much else. I just play some computer games and generally annoy people on Discord. <laughs> 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 well, that you know, I I don't think you're you're uh, annoying anyone on Discord. Really, not ours at least, because you always join in to a lot of the online games that we do. Yeah, we play a lot of good games, don't we? I know, I should really join in, but it's always on times when I'm either recording or editing my podcast. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's one of them things, I suppose. Like, a lot of people's social time, unfortunately, like, when it comes to being on their computers, a lot of people's social time is um, playing games or podcasting or editing podcasting because, obviously, the rest of their time is took up with work and things like that, so... Other boring stuff, yeah. Other boring stuff, or housework, or, yeah, family life, and... Well, that's not boring, obviously, but... Yeah, yeah um, a lot of people... A lot of people, their only time is podcasting or ed- editing podcasts, so... Yeah, it's just one of those things, but... Yeah, uh, we you should get on more. We should play some more, especially some, some Among Us and similar games like that where we can lie and cheat and steal against each other i'm absolutely for that um i just i know this is like completely different from world of warcraft but i've i've seen another game called what is it the silence or silence which is the same sort of thing as uh among us or something like that Mm -hmm. so you have a monster that can only hear people when they actually communicate over voice chat uh are you talking about phasmophobia no, 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 no. 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 Oh. It's, it's I don't actually, know what the you know, silence is in. It's, it's actually someone who plays a monster with a group of other people. Oh. It's a bit like, um, uh, what is it? The, uh, that, uh, le- not Left 4 Dead. Uh, I'm quickly looking at my desktop. Oh, uh, um. Oh. Uh, I, know, I know which one you mean. Um, Dead by Daylight. Dead by Daylight, yeah. Um, Fraz and, Fraz and Michael and Coffee and that have been playing it. So, yeah. Death, is it Dead by Daylight or Death by Daylight? Dead by Daylight. Dead it's, by it's, so it's something like that, but this game, so one person plays a monster mm-hmm. that you don't see anything. It's basically if you, you know, if I would take off my glasses, that's basically my vision that I have. Uh, but as soon as someone of the, the players talks to communicate what they need to get, then my vision immediately like brightens and it's like, that's where they are. So <laughs> they need to be completely silent over comms, which isn't possible. Yeah. Because uh, you can't be silent in the game either. But yeah, that looks hilarious to me. I don't think I've ever heard of it. I'll have to have a, have a check out of it. Um, I yeah, thought you were talking I... about Phasmophobia originally. That's another one that I need to get into. Yeah, that's, um, that's an interesting game. Terrifying. <laughs> really is. But yeah, it's... Um, it's There's a load of games like, like that coming out recently. Um, and I, spe- I think especially with the time of year it is as well, just after Halloween and things like that, you know, you're going to have a couple of games like that come onto the market. Um, yeah, and I, f- I think also with 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 the current uh, situation with the pandemic, a lot of people are forced to not see a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So these games in which you have to socialize are starting to become really big now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I just hope that it stays. It would actually be nice once this all gets... Re- resolved with a vaccine or something that we actually can st- continue to have games that are more about socialization as well yeah yeah exactly i do think um 
I, I, I just love, not just on, on computers and things like that, you know, like on the internet, I just love in general how the whole world has became, seemed to become a, a, a nicer, more tightly knit place. Um, there was a lot of hate being slung around, you know, like the whole world in general, um, not just on the political side, on like just social side as well. Um, and I think, you know, things, because of the pandemic, things have became, people have become nicer and appreciate each other more. And it, it's a good thing to see, um, especially especially in in our sphere of games and things like that. It's it's a lot of things nicer. And I mean, we on Dragon Power Studio, we try and try and cultivate that um, feel good, uh, you know, environment anyway. So mm-hmm. it's only you know only goes to strengthen what we're kind of fighting for, really. I would imagine. Yeah, exactly. I think the ethos of "Don't be a dick" is mm-hmm. uh, is very very strong in our uh, our network. Mm-hmm. It's uh, one of my favorite scenes. Just don't be there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's go to that other uh, online interactive platform that we play, which is World of Warcraft. Oh no, this one. <laughs> <laughs> this one. <laughs> now, I know what you play, but I don't know if it has changed for Sla- uh, Shadowlands. So, let's see what the what the listeners might guess what you play. So, Rick, are you Horde or Alliance? What, what do you think, Till? What do you think I play? I think I, I want to know, know what you think. I think you're still Horde. Correct, yeah, I'm still Horde. Um, I, I... Yeah, I can't get it. I, I just don't... I don't know, I just don't get the Alliance. It's just not my thing. Um, so, yeah, I play Horde. And um, this expansion, um, kind of like the last one, maybe, I've mained my warrior. Um, mm-hmm. A Zandalari warrior that I've recently... Uh, back end of BFA, I've leveled up to max level and then started to obviously turn it into my main. So yeah, I'm playing a Zandalari warrior, um, and yeah, loving it. It's great. What flavor warrior do you play? Uh, the my mind's went blank. Fury warrior. Fury, or Fury warrior. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I play Fury. Why did my mind go blank there? Yeah, I play Fury warrior. Um, I'm not. I'm not really. A, I'm not a good tank, and I. Much just prefer the idea of having two 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 handers rather mm-hmm. than one two handers. So yeah, I play Fury, and I, I, lo- I love the I love the speed of it. The 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 kind of intensity is 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 great. You know, like you're you're effectively a pinball bouncing from one mob to another at a really high speed. And the more things you kill, the more powerful you are. You know, and yeah, I love the fact that you can go into a fight. Not not so much in Shadowlands, but you, you can go into a fight. You know, like in BFA back back when that was obviously current content, and you could um, you could effectively take on like seven things and still come out swinging, or eight things still come out swinging. You know, um, so yeah, I love that. I love that kind of thing, um, and I, I just love the pace of it. Really, um, a lot of other things are quite slow, class wise for me. Um, yeah. But the warriors, the warriors, bang on. Okay, okay, very good. Right, so how did it all start for you, though? Like, going back all those years, how did it start for you to get into World of Warcraft and what was that moment that you really thought, yeah, I'm, I'll be playing this for a while? So I was always a, I was always a fan of, like, Lord of the Rings and things like that, as most mm-hmm. people are, you know. Um, and I kind of, you know, I watched Lord of the Rings and that was that, you know, it, it never really kind of bothered me after that. And then... I went away to university. Um, I went to university in in a, in a city called Sheffield in in the north of England that people might might or might not know. And um, we were in our halls of residence, and there was a uh, there was a guy in the room next to me, and we actually noticed our 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 accents were very similar. And we were like, "Huh, oh, are you from are you from this place?" He was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Ah." So then we got chatting and. One night, him, him, and one of the other guys in the in the, in our um, in our apartment, our flat, whatever you want to call it, um, they were geeking out over this game that was due to come out, and I was like, huh, "What? What? What's this? I've never even heard of this sort of thing." Um, it turns out it was World World of Warcraft because all all I knew it as all I knew that they were talking about was Wrath of the Lich King, um, mm. and, I, and I was like, "What's this?" But I'd, I'd previously heard about World of Warcraft, and I was like, "Oh, like what? What's this? Show me what! Show me what this is!" So they showed me, and I have like some really vivid memories of like um, him being at certain places when launch happened, and like you know having to wait to kill mobs and things like that. Um, 
And yeah, I, I, I kind of sat a couple of nights in his room just watching him play Warcraft sort of thing. As weird as that sounds, just watching someone playing games. It's kind of like Twitch before Twitch. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I just sat and sat and watched him. Um, and I just fell in love with it. The first the first thing I seen was was um, Torin. I was just like, what is this thing? What is this massive human humanoid cow thing? And how can I be one of them? So um, I took the train up up home. Uh, it's like a two hour train ride. I took the train up home and turned up on my mum's doorstep at like eleven o'clock at night without her even knowing I was coming home. And I um, went to bed. And the next morning I got the train straight back down. But this, when I was heading straight back down, this time I was holding, holding, carrying um, my desktop PC, which was awful. Um, it's like a like a Dell Inspiron 1998 kind of thing, um, and I was I took that and a massive CRT monitor as well on the train, wrapped in a blanket, wrapped oh in a God. wrapped in a bin bag, <laughs> um, and uh, I um, I got the train back and I had to carry the CRT monitor, so I had the PC in a rugby bag, like in a big hold all, um, and I was carrying the the, the CRT monitor through the streets of Sheffield from the train station to my my flat and um, I thought the hard work was, was over when I got to the, the actual halls of residence and then I, then I forgot that I lived on the seventh floor so I had to carry uh. <laughs> and there was no lift <laughs> no elevator so I had to carry the both of them all the way up the t- all the way up the stairs I was I was wrecked and um, yeah I set my computer up and we started playing some Warcraft and um yeah, from there it just kind of grew and grew and grew, and it's been a constant in my life ever since. It's um, I I don't I honestly don't think I would be the same person I am today without Warcraft. Like it's completely changed me and changed how I've went about my life and how, who I am. You know, mm-hmm. so so yeah, um, it just kind of it's it's a thing that a seed that got planted very early on. This was this all happened in in like two thousand and seven. Um, and it's grown ever since. So it's like 13 years I've been playing. Um, 13 short years as well, because it's went really fast. It's, cra- it's crazy how the game's 16 years old, but it's, yeah. It's scary how quick it goes, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Um, I can't believe I'm, I'm like, you know, over 30 now. When I first started playing, I was like 18, 19, something like that. And it's it's just madness. It just went so quick. All right. Well, been playing for a long time, and of course, you also got the latest expansion. Um, but did you ever go back into classic when when it came back? Because you know, you said that you got into it with Wrath of the Lich King. Um, did you ever go back to classic just to experience it? Um, I did. When it came out, I downloaded it and, and kind of started it up, and um, you know, obviously, as I've just mentioned, I've got a love for warriors. So I started a warrior up, and everybody has told me that that is the worst thing I could have possibly done. <laughs> um, but I started a warrior, and I got to like level five or six or seven or something like that, and I just thought, nope, um, and promptly shut the game down and logged back into retail. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, and I haven't, to be honest, I haven't um, played it since. So I did jump in a little bit, and it was just taking me like forty-five minutes to kill like ten crabs. Like on, you know, in the bottom of Juritara or whatever, um, it was just taking too long. Um, but I, I, I do watch um, WoW Classic. There is a, a well-known streamer called streamer podcaster called Juno. Um, people might know him, people might not know him, but he's a, he's an Australian guy and he hosts the People of Azeroth podcast. And he um, he does WoW Classic challenges, hardcore challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, so I watch a lot of classic with that. Um, he's, you know, he's trying to kind of get a paladin up to sixty without dying, and yeah. So I do watch a lot of a lot of classic, but I, unfortunately, I don't play it because it's just yeah, it, it kind of made the wrong impression on me, or I made the wrong choice when it came to choosing the right class. <laughs> yeah. it, in all fairness, you know, classic is is a hard game in that sense that it it just plays completely different and retail. 
and as much as I love it, I just know that I won't have the time for it at mm -hmm. all. And I'd rather do that with leveling 20,000 odds. So <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what yeah. I'd rather do. Exactly, yeah. I mean, everybody's different. And some people might go, nah, retail's rubbish. You should play classic. And it is what it is, I suppose. Um, but for me, yeah, I'm a, I'm a retail guy. I like... I like the way the game has evolved from there, from from where we were a classic, to now where we are. Where it seems as though Warcraft and 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 Blizzard in general have kind of looked at the whole MMORPG scene, and they've kind of taken the best thing best things from all of the games, all of the different games out of there, and implemented them into Warcraft. Um, and it's exciting because it's made the Warcraft this completely different evolving thing from what it used to be and i like that change is good um and you know if, if something's changing that i'm i'm interested in then it's a good thing you know it's only going to kind of um serve to kind of make my experience of of said thing better so mm -hmm. yeah i'm a fan of it um i'm more of a fan of a re of retail than i am classic put it that way yeah, at least it's there, you know? It just in case people are like, okay, I need something else instead of retail, then it's always there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, besides the, the big Steam library that most people have, uh, you know, that pile of shame that we <laughs> never never clear. Oh, yeah, I've got so many ridiculous games on Steam that I've, I've never even booted up. I've just, I've got them, you know, like in Humble Bundle and things like that, where you buy these, um, or G2A, where you buy these, like, random game packages where they come with like 10 random codes for 10 random games i've like bought a couple of them in the past and i've just got ridiculous like silly puzzle games that I was, i'm never ever gonna play so yeah um it yeah it is it, it is a good thing that it's still there though um that or that it's back out again classic that is mm -hmm. um you know there is people that that prefer that kind of gameplay and, and that's cool um it's more it is more of a challenge I will say that. So, if you want yeah, more and it's still, there's enough. still people playing World of Warcraft. Mm -hmm, exactly. Yeah. That's so, always good. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. So let's jump into Shadowlands. Um, what did you do on? Uh, for us, it was. Uh, I'm not going to say night because night for me is like 2 a.m. <laughs> but it was more like uh, 11 for us in the evening. What did you do uh, at 11 at night in the UK <laughs> on that day? So you know when it's like when it's like Christmas morning and like you get you get up and your parents you, you get up at like stupid o'clock in the morning and it's like three o'clock in the morning and it's like nowhere near an acceptable time to get up and unwrap presents. But you still get up and your parents tell you to go back go, to go back to bed. Well, that was kind of me with, with Shadowlands. I was kind of sitting there for like all day because I'd I'd finished work at like three o'clock in the afternoon. So I was sitting there from like three o'clock just waiting, twiddling my thumbs, playing like playing other games. Um and I sat there and I counted it down from like hours to go, minutes to go, and then it eventually launched and, and myself and Cuffy we were we, we kind of grouped up and we went through the went through that portal that appears and yeah, I went straight into it and I really enjoyed it. Um I have spoken to a couple of people where they didn't enjoy it and they found the storyline boring but I don't know how that I don't know how that even equates to to something in their mind because I, I absolutely loved it um, mm -hmm. so yeah we, we sat and we just had a chat we you know we had a chat and a laugh and Cuffy had work the next day so he couldn't stay on on, on long but yeah it was like 11 o'clock and I, I kind of finished up I finished up at maybe like 2-3 o'clock um, more so 2 o'clock I think because I was just thinking to myself um I'm kind of, I'm, I'm getting tired, so I'm not taking it all in. So I'll, um, I'll, re I'll go to bed, wake up in the morning, and then I'll, I'll kind of start again on, in the morning, fresh, fresh faced, and then I'll be able to kind of take it all in and, and kind of enjoy it more. You know, when I'm paying attention. Um, so yeah, I uh, played for a couple of hours on, on launch night, and then started again in the morning. So yeah. Okay. Okay, so not a full nighter, at least for you. I did have that plan. <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. I did have that in my mind that I was gonna play all night, and then it got to the point where it was. Just, I was getting tired, and I was just like, "Nah, I can't. I can't. I'm getting too old, Mansell. I'm too old." <laughs> 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 I, 
I'm I know that old. you're younger than me, but yeah, I, I know that feeling that, oh, that you're like, yeah, I want to, but honestly, my head is just not with it, and I just want to sleep. My body's just going to go to fuck the bed. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, I'm only 32, but I feel like when 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 I stay up like late, it feels as though it takes me days to catch up, you know? Um, so it's it's kind of give up while you're ahead, and then start again in the morning. Yeah, well, from personal experience, it will only get worse. <laughs> All that you get. Thanks for that, Sil. <laughs> Just you know, fair warning. <laughs> so let's let's go into the impressions of Shadowlands. Um, you've been playing it, uh, I, I would assume, for, for most of the time this week. Um, what are your first impressions of the game? I love it. Um, I was originally going to go into the game and choose Bastion. Like I think I've told you last time I was on the mm-hmm. podcast um, but I actually went into the game and was more excited to go to Maldraxxus after speaking with yourself and Ali and Marty on Wow It's Marty on, on Marty's podcast mm-hmm. um, and I went uh, I went to Maldraxxus and I absolutely, absolutely love it um, I basically um, I'm taking my time with Shadowlands so I don't want to burn out too quickly so I've, I've done in the storyline, I've done the start, like the more. I've done Bastion and I've done Maldraxxus. I'm now at the start of Ardenweald. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, as I say, I'm taking my time. I don't want to kind of burn out and rush myself through the story. I'm trying to take it all in. So yeah, I'm at the start of Ardenweald now. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to be choosing Maldraxxus when it comes to choosing Covenant. Definitely. Okay, okay. Um, how is how is are you level sixty yet, or are you somewhere in fifty five, fifty seven? I think I'm. Um, let me have a think. I think I'm like nearly fifty eight. Just about okay. to hit fifty eight, I think. Um, so yeah, it, it it's kind of I I feel obviously you go to all four zones before you then choose your, your covenant, mm-hmm. and I definitely think that it's going to be a case that I hit level sixty by the time I even leave Arden Weald. I think it's going to be like I'm going to out level you know the whole of the leveling experience the storyline mm-hmm. um, so yeah um, I'm just coming up to 58 I think um, but as I say I'm just taking my time with it and just making sure that I, I don't burn out because if there's one thing I'm guilty of it's, it's kind of rushing content and then not having anything to do say in a couple of months time mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and getting bored of things so yeah so when you say that you take your time, do you also explore the entire area and try to pick up any quests that you run into? Or is it really, I'm only doing campaign quests? Or how, how does it work for you? Uh, I do, I do, I try to do all of the quests because the, uh, like, I, I'm, I'm a real hater of like um, doing the storyline and then having to go back to somewhere to do the quests. I'd rather just get them all done and they're out of the way and, and finished, you know? Um, so yeah, I've been try- kind of trying to do all of the quests you know, as they come up, or if I see a quest like pop up on my map, I'll go and pick it up, sort of thing. Um, but yeah, I think I'm definitely going to go Maldrax, but I think it's going to be like and it, the way the storyline's going, because obviously I don't know the full storyline because I didn't play Alpha and Beta, and this is my first experience of Shadowlands. Um, I'm, I'm definitely excited as to where you know which way the uh, the storyline goes or the way it's heading, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, with you choosing Maldraxxus for now, uh, until you've seen everything, um, was it the the storyline or the, the the vibe that you get from the area, or what was it that swayed you? Um, it was the fact that it was the zone or the the kind of background of the zone that I knew the least amount of. Um, because I'd, I'd seen stuff about Bastion and, and Revendreth and um, Ardenweald, but I hadn't seen much about Maldraxxus and I kind of didn't know what it was. I just thought it was just like, oh, demons, and that's it. Um, so I didn't kind of know what it was or where it was heading. And um, I, cho- I chose that, as I say, based on chatting to yourselves. And um, yeah, I love it. It kind of reminds me of like a cross between... Um, between Nax Ramas and um, I think uh, actually I saw a good I saw a good tweet 
um, by Demi Demetrinoth, saying that it it reminds her of um, the Battle for Light Hope, that mm-hmm. that kind of area, um, kind of Eastern Plaguelands area, which I think is a fantastic zone and I love it. So, um, yeah, that that's the kind of vibe I get from it, and and yeah, I love that. I love I love the the Death Knight starter zone. So it kind of just reminds me of that, and you know, the nostalgia feels and all of that. <laughs> it really reminds me of Doom, uh, or uh, what is it, Doom Eternal? All of those games. It just reminds me of like being in Doom. I don't know if you've, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you've seen. There was a there was a tweet going around, and it was a the map of Warcraft, like the new the new map of Shadowlands, um, and it basically said um, it said that the Maw is Diablo. Um, mm-hmm. Maldraxxus is Doom. Um, what was it? Uh, what were uh, the other ones? Um, Ardenwald is Ori and the Black Ori, Forest. yes. Uh-huh, yeah. And, um, uh, Bastion is Hercules. Yes, that's it. <laughs> I love that one as well. <laughs> yeah, the de- definite, you get definite Greek vibes off, uh, off Bastion. Um, yeah. And, and the storyline there. And all of the naming, the naming, um, like, What's it? Naming traditions of all of the characters in in Bastion all fit in with with the Greek vibe as well. So yeah, absolutely. Um, I I got those feelings as well. It was a bit like you were in uh, like if you're familiar with um, Greek mythology, it feels like the Elysium uh, <laughs> yes. fields. Yes. That's what I really got the the vibe of, and I thought this is really cool. <laughs> I like <laughs> this. I I especially because I went back um, after I went into. What was it called? Uh, Maldraxxus. Mm-hmm. And it was halfway through. Uh, I thought, oh, I was still missing some, some quests, apparently, for Bastion to finish certain achievements, because I am very much working towards the making sure that I get all the quests done, uh, explore all the areas, just in case we get flying. I don't think we will for this one, but just mm-hmm. in case we do. Mm-hmm. I thought, I'm just going to see if I can finish this already. And uh, apparently I was missing two quests, which you don't get until you're 60 afterwards. Right. Right. So I thought, oh, right. But it's such a... When you go into Maldraxxus and then you go back into Bastion, it's such a big difference all of a sudden. Like, the mm-hmm. vibe is completely different. Mm-hmm. And I like that. Yeah, the, the art team have outdone themselves with regards to the to the new zones. Um, even just, like, the skyboxes look amazing. Like, yeah, they've done a really good job. And as you said, the, the vibes are completely different when it comes to comes to... Um, all of the different zones. Like the first thing I did when I stepped into Ardenweald was um, I just—I st- didn't even move. I just stood and I just looked around, just like 360 up, down, left, right—you name it. I just looked around, and the skybox in Ardenweald is amazing. Mm-hmm. Like it just looks so cool. Um, so yeah, um, the the vibe is good. The art team have done well, um, and I'm I'm really excited to see what the storyline kind of. Holds. There, there are some interesting bits to come that I can tell you. Definitely. No spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> um, so, in regards to the areas in Shadowlands, I know that you haven't done Revendreth yet, mm-hmm. and and you haven't done much of Ardenwald. But which one do you enjoy, or you know, like the most? Um. I think Maldraxxus. I think I um I went in there with very little expectation as to what what it was and what I knew it was going to be. So it kind of surpassed all my expectations straight away, if you know what I mean. Um you know, if you if you set your bar really low, anything's a anything's a bonus. Uh-huh. And um yeah, Maldraxxus is so cool. Like yeah, I, d- I don't know if people will have already played game the played you know all of the the storyline in the game when when obviously this comes out, but um, the the storyline about having that final goal. You'll know what I mean. You you know what I mean, or you will mm-hmm. know what I mean. Uh, having that final goal and a thing to work towards to find out where you go next. That was really interesting. A um, couple of bits from Bastion that I'm I'm kind of interested in as to kind of what is going on there because I have seen a couple of theories that um, Bastion may look and feel like it's the the good place to be but in all reality it might actually be the the bad place to be they might be the the worst people of the expansion that we meet 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason for that is the reason for that is you you don't see any kind of um, so like all of the Kyrian look the same, but apparently all of the Kyrian are made up from all different souls from all around the universe, not just mm-hmm. Azeroth. So do they do they actually like um, break you down and build you up to be what they want you to be? Do they kind of reanimate you? Because obviously they're all blue. They all look. They're all humanoids. They all. They're all blue. Uh, you don't see like a, a, a Tauran, a Kyrian walking around. Do you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm. what is their kind of motive, and how are they kind of, you know, making people? Like yeah, and and the thing is, we know that there was a Tauran's uh, mm-hmm. soul there because there's one quest that makes you help uh, forget the past of this soul. And all the examples that you see of their their past are Torin. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, so this this soul must be a Torin then, if they are still remembering that from their past. And the fact that they say that they also ask their their uh, the Kyrian the the Ascended to forget, because then they don't have any judgments of the souls that they bring in. Mm-hmm. The thought is a bit like, oh yeah, that's very noble. And then you're like, oh, so you have to forget everything about your yeah. previous life. Yeah, what are they doing? Why are they doing it? You know, they're, they're kind of portrayed to be the good guys, but mm, are they really? Yeah, it's it, yeah because I think in Ardenwald, people really, you know, when you ask them questions, they say, yeah, this was me in my previous life. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really interesting with that. Okay. Mm-hmm. So with those different areas, if you had to create your own realm in the Shadowlands, what would it be like and what would you call it? This is a hard question, Sil. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but after all, I am the guinea pig. You know, these these are new questions. It's the first time you've ever asked somebody them. So, um, I don't know. I'd kind of like something that that kind of vibes with Ice Crown. Mm-hmm. Um, something maybe, um, maybe frozen. A bit more ice and, and frozen. Yeah. And- yeah. Um, because it. Uh, I know we kind of get the explanation as to kind of, you know, the, the plague and the scourge came from mm-hmm. the Shadowlands. Um, but it's kind of, where does the ice come from? I know, I know it's set in the north northern pole of, of Azeroth. I get that. Um, but like, you know, something to kind of vibe with Ice Crown kind of to make, I don't know, make the kind of crossover, you know, I, d- I don't know, Sil. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to think. Um, something ice, but something, maybe. something a little bit more with ice and everything. And yeah, I, I, to be honest, I really love the um, really love um, Northrend. Like, I love the icy areas. Like, it just for some reason, even though it's like a desolate icy wasteland, it's got the most atmosphere for me. It's just like really pops, um, and that's that probably comes from me being a wrath baby, you know. Um, Something icy, I think. Um, so we need to get like a planet, a planet hoth in. Uh, yes, it, yes, <laughs> yes, something like that. Because um, I'm just thinking a lot, like a lot of the places are quite dark. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got like you've got Maldraxxus, which is dark. Um, it's always like cloudy and plague and all of that rubbish. And then you've got Ardenwild, which is basically set on set at night time. Um, and Rev- Revendreth is like vampires and nighttime and anima, and yeah, um, something with a bit of light actually. I know Bastion's light, but like something, something kind of with a bit of light, maybe like as you say, Hoth, just like a frozen, frozen hellhole. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I like that. I like a little bit of like ice, and uh, it, it makes it different from everything else. Mm-hmm. It, it makes it different from from seeing deserts for the past like three years playing Battle for Azeroth and, and you know all the, all the stuff in Silithus and yeah no <laughs> <laughs> alright so without spoiling it too much for people who are uh, not yet uh, played through the entire story who would you say is your favourite new character in the Shadowlands if you have a spoiler just give everyone a warning um to be honest it's not a new character um but I actually like seeing seeing more about Balvar. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I've always thought ever even you know ever since he put the crown on on the top of ice crown. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> uh, ever since he put the crown on, and he had that skin texture of just like volcanic mm-hmm. crust, like. And then, then you see him the um, the loading screen for Northrend change from Arthas to Balvar. I've just thought Balvar was awesome, and I, like I, I needed kind of some more more information about him. You know what I mean? And um, seeing seeing his character kind of go from being a commander of the Alliance, disappearing, getting tortured, turned into the Lich King, and then sitting on the throne for that for so many years, and you only see him when you do the Death Knight. Death Knight um, uh, quests for the for the mm-hmm. the weapons for Legion. Um, you only really see him then. You don't really kind of find out a lot about him. But now we're starting to find out about him. Um, he's met obviously um, ourselves in Oribos, and he's kind of he's leading the charge for for like the Azerothians going to going to. Oribos and to the Shadowlands. So yeah, I'm, it's it's if anything, he's not a, not a new character, but it's Balvar. Yeah, I'm uh, mm-hmm. I'm kind of stoked to see kind of him get his story fleshed out a bit more because apparently he's one of the greatest warriors that has ever lived on Azeroth as well. So it's nice to for him to get his kind of rec- recognition, you know. Uh, especially now that his daughter is uh, prominently in the game as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. That is going to be interesting, considering that she was with Jaina when Jaina got kidnapped. Mm-hmm. Um, that's for me really interesting that she actually got into that position that she is so close to Jaina now mm-hmm. um, yeah that will be uh, interesting to see how that relationship develops definitely definitely I'm, uh, I'm excited to see kind of how it goes you know um, will, he, will he see his daughter mm-hmm. again I don't know mm. <laughs> you'll have to play the game for that so this is a new sort of question, so you have to pick one of these. If you want to answer both, that's fine. But if you want to do one, that's also fine. So, out of these two, if you if there was a character that you could send back from the Shadowlands to Azeroth, who would you pick and why? Or, the other way around, what character that is now in, alive in World of Warcraft deserves to immediately go to the Shadowlands and where would you put them? So, we're sending, sending somebody there or there. To Shadowlands yeah. Azeroth, right? We're, uh, either they're going back or they're going, you know. Um. Oh, I don't know because you see, I don't. The thing is, I don't know who has been sent to the Shadowlands. I don't know who we're going to see. So this is a difficult question. Um, somebody who's uh, I'd probably send somebody back to Azeroth because then I know for a fact that they're actually, or they they might end up there and then appear again. Mm-hmm. Um. So. I would like to see Varian come back. I, I, I would like to see Varian come back. As I say, I don't know whether he is in Shadowlands or not. But um, if he would be there. If he was there, I would send him back to Azeroth. Um, I'd, I'd also like to see Gul'dan go the other way. I know he's I know he's dead. Um, but I would like to see Gul'dan be eternally tortured and, and, and be you know the jailer's bitch. <laughs> so you would immediately send him to the mall? Immediately. He would be, he would be locked up in the most secure tower there is in, in the mall and he would be he would be the jailer's bitch because I cannot stand Gul'dan <laughs> I really cannot stand him he's just a uh, just a prick <laughs> I think also what the problem was with Gul'dan is that we got him too much <laughs> in uh, the span of an expansion you get that a little bit with Sylvanas now that I know that they're creating overarching stories for all the expansions but sometimes it is too much that you get a villain for a, a very long time which gives character development but it's also something a little bit like okay this person again for the villain mm-hmm. yeah um it, well, uh, to be honest i don't even think it was just one expansion it was like what two three expansions i think Gul'dan was, was was wasn't it yeah and it was just like every time every time something went wrong Gul'dan turned up and it was just like Oh, not again. Gul'dan, go away. Like, come up with a new narrative. <laughs> not the writers, Gul'dan, that is. Come up with a new yeah. narrative, you know? Just stop being a fucking dick for being a dick's sake. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it was. He just wanted power. He just being a dick because he, he could be a dick. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. Go Dan, man. I can't stand him. Okay, fair enough. I think a lot of people would agree with you. Right, let's let's go to Faction Pride. So, I know your horde. Um, but how do you feel about the factions nowadays? Do you think that the factions should be abolished? Or um, do we need maybe a third faction that's neutral uh, to keep all the factions? Or maybe we need to put the war back into Warcraft and, you know, if it's red, it's dead? <laughs> um, so, there's a couple of, obviously, a couple of avenues you can go down with that question. So... First one, should factions be abolished? No. Warcraft is built from day one on humans versus orcs. Mm-hmm. The first game was called humans, orcs versus humans or whatever it was called. Um, so from day one, it's been built on that um, struggle, that con- constant butting of heads that the Horde and the Alliance or the orcs and the humans have had. Um, so I, I don't know... I don't, I don't think that they should be getting rid of factions um, because it, it adds that bit of spiciness to the game as well. Do we need a third faction? I have toyed with the idea in my head in, in the past. Um, have like a when we didn't know who was going to be the next kind of the next Lich King, the next Lich, Lich Queen sort of thing, and everyone thought it was going to be Sylvanas, and Sylvanas was going to be the, the the leader of the Scourge, and not the Scourge, yeah, the Scourge, um, going to be the leader of the Scourge and things like that. Um, I did toy with the idea of like having like horde alliance and then like an undead faction where mm-hmm. you could be you could be any any race but they were undead like dead versions of them and you could play as like a an undead faction so you had like the forsaken who still had their will and the scourge would still have their will but you were playing obviously as like a a bad guy team mm-hmm. um so I, did, I have I have toyed with that idea in my head in the past, um, and then do, you know, do we need to get the war back into Warcraft? I think we've just had it with with battle for our, battle for our Azeroth, um, Horde and Alliance going at it. I, I I don't know I don't know about you, but I've seemed to kind of notice a pattern where it's like we fight, then the fighting then the fighting kind of takes a backseat because something big and bad has happened, mm-hmm. or or a big bad comes along. We deal with that big bad, and then we go back to fighting, um, like expansion by expansion. I don't know if you, I don't know if you've noticed that, but um, it's it definitely seems as though it's like um, it takes time to kind of fight and then fight the fight what's trying to quell us, and then fight again between each other again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, keep the spiciness alive. And keep keep the the factions and keep the the whole horde versus alliance. It, it's an interesting dynamic. I really like the dynamic of of kind of the the infighting between the two player factions, but then also having to fight this extra thing, like in the corner of the room as well. You know, yeah. It's uh, it is an interesting dynamic, and plus, I, you know, I like I like the idea that people people have this faction pride and people, um. They're proud to kind of represent the Horde and proud to represent the Alliance so much so that people get it tattooed on their body and things like that, you know. Um, yeah. Let me ask you a, a this is this is um this is going to be an odd question, but oh, it's man. just because I've I've read this I've read it and I always refer to this article that I've read because I'm very curious how people see it and I've heard different opinions about this. So some people say that they are sick and tired of the faction war. Because it just divides hate and racism. Because the race... They actually call it racism as well. Because a lot of the orcs are hated by humans. And it's basically racism in the game. And it should be taken out of the game. Because that will reflect into real life. Mm -hmm. Especially with what has happened this year. Um, uh, You know, the the huge movement of Black Lives Matter. Um, A lot of people say that there is no place for stuff like that anymore in the game. Uh, and that players might take that outside of the game and into real life. How do you feel about that statement? I think it's on our on it's it's on us as players. It's our responsibility to make sure that it doesn't translate that way. Um, mm-hmm. I know there is you know there is going to be idiots that do translate it like that, um, but it's it's on us as as people to be better people, um, to be you know to to realize that this is a game. 
um, and that what happens in game doesn't necessarily translate into real life. I do get the the fact that you know certain connotations can be taken taken in different ways by in different ways by different people. Um, but I also th- I also think that people do need to realise it's a game at the end of the day, and that um, you know orcs are made up, taurons are made up, gnomes are made up. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's a fantasy setting, and it's a it's a it's a storyline. At the end of the day, you know it's 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 like any story. You 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 kind of broaching on on the kind of on the the territory of do we just get rid of stories because they kind of you know they they throw out narratives that might not be generally well perceived in the world in general. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So so it's kind of. I do, I do, I do actually get it. I really do get the fact that people think that it does breed these sentiments in the real world. But then again, I also think that people need to have that responsibility with themselves that um, they need to realise it's a game and it, you know it's fantasy at the end of the day. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, um, I do like the faction pride, and I do like the fact that people feel as though they've got something to represent. But then, as you say. Um, people need to kind of just don't be dicks <laughs> yeah just just don't be a dickhead <laughs> yeah because you, you see that faction pride especially with uh, like when you go to or you see BlizzCon uh, on, on the streams and everything or when you go to BlizzCon I've always heard that yeah of course there's faction pride but I've never heard anyone getting beat up because they are alliance yeah. or if they are a horde yeah um, you know, there's a little bit of like um, banter in between that. Do you, is that one of the things that you think like, okay, well, that just needs to stay, or is that like that that is a slippery slope that could end? Yeah, I mean, it's not. You know, the, the game is becoming more more kind of inclusive for people. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the likes of taking away the the real money transaction for changing gender and things like that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, and I think. Um, that that can only be a good thing, and you know, as you say, people aren't getting beaten up in the streets for being Horde or Alliance. Um, like people are getting beat up in the streets for being homosexual or or trans mm-hmm. or or a different skin color, race or creed or religion, whatever. Um, it's it, I don't know. It's a very complex world we live in, still, and I think um, I don't know. It is. It's a. It's a difficult subject. It really is. And we had. We we obviously had the roundtable discussion with yourself and and other people on this podcast in the past. And um, I mean, I suppose the only thing I can continue to do is just continue to try and better myself and be a better person. Um, and I've so far I've I've kind of been achieving that this year, and hopefully that can continue. Um, but just realize it's a game, and you know, yes, you can represent. You can represent your side the way you want to represent your side but just don't be a dick about it and just just be a nice person yeah exactly i mean i remember there was a game uh i think it was created by dutch a developer <laughs> that says a lot about my country yeah. but um there was a, co- a game called carmageddon yes in which you had to hit people with your car uh for and the more people you hit the the higher score you had now that uh, for me it was like Okay, I'm not going to get into my car now and actually start, you know, driving on the street <laughs> yeah. like an absolute maniac. Yeah, it's like this whole, this whole like when when Grand Grand Theft Auto come like comes out, it co- the the argument rears its head every time Grand Theft Auto, a new Grand Theft Auto comes out, and it's like, um, does video games breed violence? And the answer would probably be no. There's there's you get the odd isolated cases where people you know take it realistically, but as you say, you're not going to jump in your car and start mowing people down just because you played a game. Mm-hmm. There is going to be people that are in that mindset, and they kind of, you know, they might be mentally not of sound mind. But to to say that all gamers are going to kind of go out and, and do things like that is kind of ridiculous when a, such a vast amount of the population play computer games, you know? Yeah, and I think that, like you say, you know, there are people like that who are trying to find something to to sort of sort of blame. Mm-hmm. Uh, that triggered them. They would have found it anywhere, either on on the internet uh, with YouTube channels or websites. Um, there are uh, movies they can watch, TV series, all sorts. 
Yeah. So, you know, it's it's just easier to blame a game, but I think we are kind of past that stage now. Um <laughs> Now that so many people have games, and again, especially during the pandemic, everyone seemed to become a gamer all yeah. of a sudden. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, I think I think it only it only helps when you can when when a lot of game de- developers are making games available for for you know various platforms as well. That mm-hmm. that helps massively. Um, I know I was last night me and me and the wife and a couple of friends were playing Jackbox, and um, the fact that you can access that on any platform. And just you know, bring it up on your phone and play along on your phone is, is incredible. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't have had that like five six years ago sort of thing. Um, so yeah, everyone's became become a gamer, and I think it's good. I, I, I don't understand the version that people have. Some people have to computer games because it literally is like watching TV, but you you having an input into the storyline. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I always compare it to reading a book because yeah. uh, it's it's the same. You know, you follow a story. It depends on what you do, but it, you follow a story. More, it's much more interactive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Why? Like a lot of people, like not a lot of people, but I don't understand why people wouldn't want to interact with something that they're watching. Do you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. have, you're, you can have a tangible out outcome on or tangible impact on the outcome of whatever you're playing or watching or, or doing. You know. Um, so yeah, um, I think the fact that a lot of people have became become gamers, it's a good thing, um, and they can kind of understand us. Well, it's kind of cool to be a gamer now, mm-hmm. where I do, whereas I don't think it was in the past. I think it was like you're a nerd, you're a geek, and that's that's the <laughs> end of it. You're just kind of one one kind of arm of society over there. Um, and now I think, as I say, it's become like quite quite cool to be a gamer, and it's more. I mean, look at the look at the likes of esports and things. That's kind of taken off as well, isn't it? So yeah, it's much more recognised, I think now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. So talking about people, what has the Warcraft community meant to you? Oh, the Warcraft community. Um, so back in the day, um, when I first started playing Warcraft, it was like um, it was quite a. It, it could seem quite a harsh and toxic place when I first started playing. Um, now it's more so that the community especially getting involved in, in podcasts and things the way I have it's become so much more of a like of a um, I don't know like a family community sort of thing we you know we, we've got our friends that we play we play games with um, myself and yourself um, we've got that kind of family there and as I say in general people just seem to become nicer nicer about it um, and for me the community is, as I say has went from being like quite a harsh and toxic place or it could be um, to a really really nice place like all of the stuff I don't know whether it's just who I choose to follow and, and kind of that community mm-hmm. you know putting its things into the Twitter sphere but like the amount of um, the amount of like good vibes that get sent around and stuff on Twitter is really good. Um, yeah, I think the community's definitely improved, and for me, it, it means a lot. Um, at my time and place in my life at the moment. Um, oh God, I'm getting really deep here. I'm getting really deep. You're getting it all out of me here, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's it, it definitely means a lot, um, and it's it's kind of. I don't know. I'm I'm making I'm making friends and, and meeting people who I think I think you know are kind of going to be a pl- like present in my life for a long while now, mm-hmm. um, and that's all because of Warcraft. You know, it's 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 Warcraft's fault that I have to sit here and talk to you. <laughs> 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 no, I I love being on being on your podcast and everybody else's podcasts. Um, yeah, it it means a lot, and it's 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 also you know hopefully I've got a f- good feeling that it's going to mean a lot in the future as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so too. I, it does seem that um, more and more people. I mean, the thing that I I hate, and I talk to Frasley about this, is that I hate that a lot of people, as soon as you comment on something that you don't agree, you're being called a, uh, a snowflake or a yeah. social justice warrior, and I'm like, well, since when is that an insult? that you are you know fighting for something that's just common decency mm-hmm. and 
I think we need to get out of that attitude and, and not be like that anymore and just, you know, be like, well, no, you wouldn't say that to me face to face. Yeah. Uh, unless you want to get punched in the face. So. Any, anybody saying that to me face to face is going to get planted in the ground. I'm six foot eight and 28 stone. <laughs> say it to my face and I'll, 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 I'll cave your face in. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I know, exactly. So, like, yeah. Um, and uh, what, I saw something about, you know, about snowflakes the other day, and it was, like, uh, every snowflake's, you know, different, like... Um, snowflakes are, like... Uh, I can't remember what it was, but snowflakes are cool, and, you know, so what if I'm if someone's a snowflake? Like, let people be who they want to be. It's not... F- the way I see it, you know... I, c- I couldn't... You know, I'm supportive of people who, who kind of want to be who they want to be, but... If it doesn't have an effect on my life, it why should it why should it bother me? You know what I mean? Like if, if someone if someone decides to paint themselves pink and and kind of identify as I don't know as a as a pink grapefruit, <laughs> that doesn't have an effect on my life. So more power to them. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. It's it's just. We need. We do need to get out of this mindset of, of just people being being nasty to people. For the, the the art of debate seems to have just disappeared. You know, the art of conversation and, and being able to to kind of debate points back and forwards just seems to have disappeared. And it's kind of opinions matter overall. And and if if you have a stronger opinion than than somebody else, your opinion should be right. And that's not the case. You should you should be open to having a conversation and open to having a debate about something, and and be willing to discuss the, the pros and cons of a, of a certain point, mm-hmm. um, because that's kind of what's got us to where we are as a as a species. You know, the art of debate, the art of of kind of um, philosophy, and and kind of being an individual and being different. That's if we were all the same, it would be a boring place, as people say. Do you know what I mean? So exactly, it would just be a grey mass with everyone wanting the same thing. And exactly. Then, yeah, I I completely agree with you. I just I don't get where this is coming from. I also hate the whole phrase of oh it's the internet, so you need thick skin. No, why why do you need to have thick skin for anything? No, you shouldn't. You shouldn't you should, have to. You should be comfortable being who you are, who you are, and where you are on the internet. It shouldn't matter. You can. It's every the internet was created for everybody to have a voice. You know, exactly. and and obviously, um, people do have a voice on the internet now, and and they have, you know, they, they they do and say what they want, and I think a lot of people need to be held into held to account for what they do say to people on the internet now, um, and they should they shouldn't be able to just, as you say, be a keyboard warrior and hide behind a screen. Yeah, I think I think we will get that in the future when, I think the law starts to become much stricter with certain things and people who um, threaten uh, people with rape or murder or anything like violence via messages uh, in a sort of anonymous way I feel like the law needs to start to become much stricter on that and as soon as something like that happens you can actually get a visit of the police Mm-hmm. <laughs> just you know come onto some kind of registry and you be banned from things because I think there's far too many sites like Twitter Facebook who still allow a lot of that hate stuff to happen mm-hmm. yeah. I mean I love it when you see like these female streamers and they get messages like that from like 10 or 12 year olds who mm-hmm. think they're so cool and then they send those messages to their mums yeah. on Facebook and go like this is what your son sent me yeah like calling people out for the for the bullshit um yeah, like what goes through people's minds when they when they when they say stuff to that, say stuff to people like that, you know? Like you know, somebody puts something on on Twitter or Facebook and then the first comment is like die. What like what gives people a right and what what's going through people's minds, you know, t- to be putting stuff like that, man? They should be held accountable, but I suppose yeah, you know, the human race is, is a complex thing and um everybody's different. Like we've just been champ- championing the mm-hmm. case of everyone's different and everyone is different and it would be a very boring place if everyone wasn't um, so yeah I suppose that's the variety you get when when you have a such a mixed and vibrant culture and, and race as such as the human race well you know hopefully the law will get a little bit more switched on and, and with it, with the modern times yeah. uh, and we'll get more 
I don't know, just you know that we're a little bit safer. Yeah, around you, you're always, you're always going to have the people calling it out as well. You know, like the whole like Big Brother thing and mm-hmm. um, people, you know, like governments watching people and stuff like that. So you're always going to have the kind of the the people on the other side of the fence that are anti, kind of, I don't know, anti policing the internet sort of thing. Um, yeah, it, it's I suppose it is what it is, and you kind of just got to fight the cause. You know, spread the good word and fight the cause as much as you can sort of thing as much as we can with the voice we've got exactly I think you know as long as you try to be a, a nice person and not, and not be a dick mm-hmm. then at least you're doing your part mm-hmm. exactly okay well Rick we've come to the final question for the interview which has stayed the same <laughs> um, and for those who are new this is the question so what is your whisper and a whisper can be anything it's maybe something that you wish for in the game uh, any game mechanics you want implemented or taken out or maybe a bit of fairy crafting about where the story might be going so anything that you wish for but what is your whisper so I haven't played Shadowlands enough to kind of know where it needs to be improved, I would say. Mm-hmm. But there's one little thing that really, really bugs me with Warcraft. Really bugs me. And that is the fact that whenever I start a new character, auto-loot isn't automatically turned on. <laughs> it really, really gets my goat that auto-loot, I have to turn it on every single time. And I have to set up my action bars as well. You should be able to set like an overall profile for your get for your game for the game and you when you make a new character your action bars are sorted out and auto loot is turned on like that would be i would be a very happy man if if they make managed to make those changes <laughs> very yeah. small it's a very small one and it's probably you know on a lot of people's lists and it's not very significant to kind of the fact that we're talking about shadowlands but yeah yeah, now I get it. I think auto loot should it should be the other way around, really. That auto loot is automatically on. Switch it off if uh, if you don't want it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't pertain to Shadowlands, but <laughs> no, I like it. I like it. Anything for the game, so that doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Rick, thank you so much for the interview. Thanks for having us. It's uh, it's always a good time when me and you get together and we have a have a good good natter. I felt as though I've waffled quite a lot, so apologies to anybody who no. felt as though I waffled. But yeah, um, I had, I've had a good time, and um, yeah, I'm more than happy enough to to come on again and be subjected to questioning. And, and Absolutely. Um, if pe- if people on. want to follow you, where where can they find you on the internet? Um, we are on Twitter at Charactercraft, literally just at Charactercraft, all one word. Um, I think it's all lowercase as well. And um, you can also find our website, which is Charactercraft.net. And then on there, you can find all of the links to the podcast. Um, and you can even listen to it there. And there's Discord and email and all of that, you know, all, all the ways to, you know, to get in touch with us and you know, if you want to chat with us and whatever, we're on Discord. We're on many people's Discords. Um, yeah, but so just just search for Charactercraft on on the internet in general, and you'll you'll find us. Perfect. I'll make sure that those links are also in the show notes if people want to uh, to be even more lazy and just click on that. Uh, but again, thank you so much for being a guest, Rig. And hopefully, in a few months, we'll talk about um, uh, Shadowlands again and just how you've experienced the entire story and mm-hmm. all of that. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to kind of finishing it and, and discussing it with you because obviously, I've not finished it, but it's looking exciting. And <laughs> to those who are who are who are still playing it or have completed it, you know, hope you enjoyed it and I hope you are enjoying it. I'll be looking forward to that chat. Mm -hmm. so i hope you enjoyed that interview make sure that you check out riggs's podcast it's really good yeah and let's go to our question of the week and the question of the week was are you raid ready uh is there any encounter any bosses that you're looking forward to or maybe uh some loot that you would like to receive and of course you know there are those of you who absolutely are not raid ready Uh, maybe you don't want to raid uh, at all and you just want to focus on something else but I was kind of curious about that so let's jump to Twitter to see what you guys said Um, Tim said raid ready going to jump in this Sunday with my guild looking forward uh, the most to just playing new content again with the guild 
Yeah, I completely share that sentiment. Uh, Dmitrinov said, not ready yet, but would like to get into it. Maybe waiting for Elevar, but hopefully we'll be able to get a guild group going. I want to see it for the lore. It's, I, I mean, I really like it. I like the encounters and I love some of the RP that goes on. Uh, Stormy Steph said, I am not ready yet, but I am planning on doing LFR, if real life permits. Hopefully a few runs of normal before the tier ends. I hope so too. Cloud Breath said, uh, I'm very happy to be raiding with my guild this week. As for raid readiness, 181 uh, eye level and the head of the curve on Castle Pineapple, <laughs> yeah. So Castle Nafia can't be too much of a challenge anymore, right? And most looking forward to summoning Ufred and Malikan stealing everyone's appearances. So Cloud is in my in my raid team and um, Ufred is our guild or is our raid leader. <laughs> Who has been on the show a few weeks ago. And uh, yeah, we're always told, don't you fucker summon me. Because every time that we do get a summoning summon, we try to uh, summon Ufrit, who's already there. But we constantly do that, so he's getting constantly spammed by the messages. Um, which, you know, it's uh, I'm, I'm going to say it's tradition now, so whether he likes it or not, it will happen every raid. <laughs> Dominic V said, raid ready, and we are starting tomorrow with a chill normal run. Just looking forward to killing new bosses and getting to know my new raid group. First time since End of Wards that I'm raiding in another guild. Oh well I hope it's really nice and I hope it's you enjoy it. At Laria said raid ready. My guild organized a normal raid the moment service came up. Heroic really hurts this first week but it makes it challenging. Wow I'm impressed with heroics already. Nice one. Um, Ali said I'm not ready sadly. Adulting and podcasting get uh, kept me busy and this past weekend was filled with Christmas stuff. Plus, to be honest, I took my time leveling so I could take notes, read everything and really immerse myself. I'll get caught up this week and join my guild next week. I think that's very wise, you know. If, if you don't want to rush it, don't rush it. Um, Seth said, I'm ready for the raid. Uh, good, I hope you have already raided or at least, you know, had some success. Nick Z said, not uh, raid ready, still not max level. We'll get into Nafria eventually, presumably as LFR sometime after it's been out for a while. Uh, Dreadlord Acid said, I am just barely raid ready, got all my gear from Heroic Dungeons and filled the missing slots with some PvP gear. Looking forward to jumping in and seeing the raid bosses, what fun mechanics uh, they came up with for them, and seeing the story bits that are tied to the raid. Uh, Vatran said uh, same here so the same as Ali uh, I think a lot of people have that that they're either not just ready yet so quickly because it is very quickly that this raid has come out um, I think it's only like two weeks now we've been playing for two weeks and already there's a raid so it's it's asking a lot of people especially around this time of year um, Others Hammer said, already have two bosses down in Nafria. Raiding is my favorite activity in the game. It's coming together as a team to defeat bosses none of us could alone. It's a beautiful synergy of tanks, healers and DPS, each contributing in a necessary uh, set unique way to success of all. American football, uh, football coach uh, Bill Parcels would yell at his players during the game. This is why you lift all those bleep weights. Well, raids are why we run all those mythics, grind professions and everything else we do to be raid ready. I don't want to let my team down. That's a nice way of thinking of it. I think that's a really nice way of thinking of it. And Daniel said, my priest is ready by means of item level, but I can't decide if I want to play discipline or holy. Both specs are so much fun. I think I have to wait and see what fits the group best after a few raid nights. After Revendreth, I'm looking forward to the story the most. So there you have it. A lot of you, you know, there's a balance. Some people not yet ready yet and, and just, you know, leveling uh, slowly on, which is fine. And other people are completely like pumped to go immediately as soon as the doors open uh, as a matter of a figure of speech, <laughs> I guess, for the castle. But I, yeah. I think it's a bit quick, but it's good that we're getting so much stuff already. I just hope that we don't get burned out uh, anytime soon. It doesn't feel like that with this expansion yet, so we shall see. And that's it. That's all the stuff for this week. 
Um, of course, I know that most of you are fully preparing for Christmas. So I'll make sure that the question of the week for this week will reflect that as well. Maybe something about what you want uh, under the tree, <laughs> for World of Warcraft wise. But we shall see. Uh, if you want to follow all of that, make sure you follow the Twitter account if you want to dive into that. Right, boys and girls, thank you so much for uh, downloading and listening and uh, giving your opinions and all of that. I really, really appreciate it because we're, uh, we're only like two or three weeks away now for the end of the year. It is absolutely bizarre to me how quickly this year has gone. That's probably because I've been locked down all this time. Uh, weird year, but let's hope 2021 will bring something better and not the apocalypse. You never know, you know. Maybe it will get worse. I have no idea. It can go either way. Anyhow, if you want to find more about the show, you can do that here. Go to whispersofwar.podbean.com if you want to find all the show notes uh, and links uh, to our, the guests and all of that fun stuff. Join dragonpoweredstudio.com forward slash discord if you want to be part of the conversation. We are a lovely bunch of people there on the network. At Twitter at whispers underscore of underscore war. Of course for the question of the week and other shenanigans. Uh, my personal one is mcmonkeys, MC Monkeys with a Z where I post lots of random bollocks uh, in all fairness. Uh, email whispersofwarpodcast at gmail.com and the twitch is twitch.tv forward slash mcmonkeys with two z's the quest for a decent webcam is still ongoing <laughs> i have to admit uh, no such luck because um yeah i just don't have any luck with it it's it's as simple as that and that's it. And of course, the intro and outro are made by the amazing Tom the Knight on uh, on Twitter, who also has his own podcast, uh, Free Extra Lives, and is part of the Dragon Power Studio, one of the founders. So make sure that you check that out as well. I hope that all of you, um, whether you're going into Castle Nafria this week or not, uh, are having a fun time in game. I hope that despite everything, you still get a little bit of Christmas vibes. I, I, be honest, I'll, I'll, I'm not getting it. Uh, that's because, you know, I avoid the town center, I avoid going out in general, uh, and I don't go to my, uh, my yearly shop in the garden center to get new baubles and all of that stuff because um i hate people <laughs> that's such a christmas thing to say no i just don't want to be in in the crowds uh it's just a bit too soon for that still so i don't know maybe the christmas atmosphere will hit me soon but we still have like a week and a half so you know there's time anyhow i hope that you guys have a lovely time in world of warcraft this week and Keep an eye on the question of the week and I'll talk to you next week. I'm not taking a break over Christmas, just so you know. So the show will continue now for two more times, I think it is. And then there's New Year. So two more shows to go for the end of the year. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. This show is brought to you by Dragon Powered Studio. Find more at dragonpoweredstudio.com. Thank <laughs> you.